All right, hello everyone. My name is Steven, and I have recently decided to do a uh, kind of Alaska survival video. I live out here in Wasilla, Alaska, and I've uh, been out here for a couple years now, uh, originally from Tennessee, and uh, I figured, you know, why not do a survival video out here, and you guys can kind of see what lifestyle is like, and... Uh, and just give you some general pointers. I mean, this is not meant for anybody advanced uh, survival techniques or anything like that. Just some general run-of-the-mill uh, stuff that we do out here in Alaska. It's a little bit more different than um, than what you'd find in the lower 48. Uh, I have to admit, uh, the first couple seasons out here, it, it was a little bit of an adjustment. And uh, I quickly learned the importance of some things versus uh, others. But uh, without further ado, I'll start by saying this is probably one of the most important videos that you'll watch, and ironically, it's the first. Um, the reason why I say that is weapon maintenance is paramount to your success. Uh, whether you're out in the bush, in the backwoods, uh, or even on the city streets, when, uh, when time calls, you want your weapons to perform as they're intended. You know, the last thing you want is to have a weapon malfunction in a life or death situation. So, because of that, I've decided to share this as my first video. And uh, what I like to do is I like to pull out all my weapons twice a year and just give them a good rundown. Uh, and wipe them off, dust them off, put some oil on them. That way that you, you just know that when when you pull them out to fire, they're going to be ready to go. And throughout this video, I'll just be generally talking about stuff that I've learned along the way. So let me put this camera down and uh, we'll kind of get started and I'll talk through some of the stuff here. Let's see. All right, let's put this guy down on the ground. All right, so first thing first is the cleaning stuff that you have. So uh, for my first weapon I'm going to clean, I guess this guy since he's in the, uh, in the field of vision, I'm going to pull out... Um, pull out a couple things and we'll see uh, we'll see where we go let me turn this camera around a little bit so I can see all right so right here I have uh, some bore cleaning uh, tools here came with uh, the kit for my nine mil but we're starting on the 357 mag this guy is loaded because I use this as my uh, home defense. Uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, making sure that you're protected at all times. Uh, last, like I said, you know, whenever you want your weapon to perform for you, that's when it it needs to perform. And you don't want to have someone busting in the house and having to go search for a weapon or have it malfunction while you're. Um, while you're under attack. So uh, my first weapon here is a 357 mag. I've had it for several years. This is what uh, I consider my, my honestly my favorite weapon. He's, he's awesome. He's the right size, you know, not too big, not too small. And I definitely wanted a revolver because uh, when my wife is home alone, there's, there's nothing you have to do. It's, it's a double action. So it's just literally point and squeeze the trigger and it's, it's going to go off. And uh, just like I told her or any uh, women that might be watching this video, don't be afraid of a weapon, because especially a revolver, because once uh, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to squeeze the trigger and it's going to go off and you're going to hit them and the threat is neutralized, or you're going to squeeze the trigger and it's going to go off and you're going to scare the hell out of both of you guys and he'll probably run away. So uh, it, it's definitely an interesting dynamic when the opponent realizes that you're armed, their will to fight is greatly diminished. But nonetheless... I'm going to use this oil first. This is some oil I got uh, when I bought my 9 mil. There's only a very little bit left in it, but, you know, I'm going to keep using it until until it, it's, it's all gone. But uh, I like to apply it directly to the brush here, just like this. 
it doesn't take a lot. A little goes a long ways. Um, if you happen to have this, this is a Smith & Wesson uh, 626. It's a six shooter and uh, it will take 38 rounds as well. That's one of the reasons a lot of people buy this is uh, you can target practice with uh, your 38 special rounds. Uh, I always run 357 mag rounds. Um, that's those guys. But um, anyway, so just run this uh, bore brush through here a couple times and then I try and get in here in the groove and then go through each individual chamber of the uh, of the weapon here. After that, grab you a paper towel or a, or a towel, get you some oil on it, and then I just generally rub down the, uh, the outside. This helps protect it from, uh, from corrosion and um, carbon buildup that you get from firing the weapon. You'll notice, I don't know if y'all can see it on there, but I have a little bit of carbon staining right here from, uh, just from using the weapon. So I'll dab a little bit of oil on there. Let's see if I can't buff it out. There we go, it's cleaning up. But this is actually the easiest weapon to clean too because there's there's very little actually going on with it. You know, this is another spot that you'll get a lot of carbon buildup is right here because that's where the um, the rounds, they sit in like this. So the, the carbon will blast out this direction through the barrel. So you got to really kind of scrub it a lot of times I'll use the brush uh, right after I fire it that's another good tip here for you is immediately after you're done firing your weapons go on and give it a quick wipe down I mean I got it the uh, I mean you can already see look at look at the I've already cleaned these once but when you put the uh, CLP or the lubrication on there um, it pulls the the um, carbon deposits out of the metal so then you're able to uh, once you store it uh, you come back to clean it again and you're going to find it, it's still dirty. Uh, so that's another good tip. But um, like I was saying, once you get out there and you start shooting, um, when you get home, go on and rub it, rub your weapon down because that, that, all that gunpowder and carbon deposits is just going to sit on your weapon and it's going to decrease the lifespan of it. So that's a, a, actually a pretty good tip. But other than that, that guy's, uh, he's all done. I mean, it's quick, down and dirty and easy for him. So I'm gonna get him loaded back up. I do have a quick loader, but you know, I didn't, didn't pull it out for this, this video. All right, he's good to go and he's done. Place you over there. All right, now this one, this is my nine mil. Um, it's a SIG SP 2022 probably the weapon I've owned the longest and uh, the weapon I know the most but um, if you do have this weapon or uh, decide to pick up this weapon uh, the pros and cons pros it's the perfect balance weight ratio in my opinion it's just big enough to where um, it's not too bulky and it's small enough to where you can still use it as a concealed weapon I can still carry this all the time I do have the um, Smith & Wesson shield and uh, I would actually recommend that over this if you're going to do a concealed carry every day. Uh, generally out in the bush, I carry the 357 mag, um, mainly because there's no chance of malfunction. You just squeeze the trigger and it's going to go off and the caliber's decent enough. But uh, the one drawback I do not like about this weapon is that uh, it has no safety. It has a decocker um, and the hammer back here, obviously, but um, there is no safety and uh, yeah, I just generally don't don't care for that. So when I carry it, I'd never carry around in the chamber because I don't want it to go off, uh, which is generally what you don't want to do because that that the time it takes to charge your weapon may may very well be the end right there. But uh, anyways, to clean this guy, the first thing I like to do is I like to take all the rounds out of the magazine, and the reason why I do that is to increase the lifespan of your mag. This weapon has two mags, so I take the old one out. Oh, my dog's freaking out over there. I take the old one out and grab the new one and load the rounds into the new magazine. Now, I do that because your spring in your mag will eventually wear out. And 
So by rotating your rounds through your magazines, it increases the lifespan. Um, number one reason of a weapon malfunctioning aside from user error is a uh, poor magazine feed. So again, it's all about using your weapon or making sure your weapon is able to perform when the call needs to use it, when, when the call is to use it. So um, once you load your magazine, always give it a tap on the back side uh, that seats your rounds into the back of the magazine. Again, it's all about performance of your weapon. So here, um, this is gonna be kind of a, a difficult if you have this weapon, if you've never used it before. But right here is a, uh, there's a little lip that sticks up above behind the slide and you gotta match this little notch up with the lip. So, pull it, it's easier actually if you cock it. You know what, I should have done this at the beginning. First thing you wanna do is check and make sure your weapon is clear, which it is. So now, we're gonna match this lip up over this, um, this slot. For this guy, it's easiest if you just pull the hammer back and then you line it up and then there's a button on the other side right there, that raised button. You press that right as this lines up here and it'll pop this whole slide out. Just like so, press the button, there it comes out. Then you pull this piece out, comes out, easy enough, and the weapon comes apart. And then you have your polymer frame right here. That's, there's nothing to that, it's just a piece of plastic with some hardware in it. Uh, now this you gotta be, be careful for, because here's your buffer spring. Now this has a little nipple in it that seats right into this metal piece right here of the barrel. So you compress your spring just enough to get the nipple out of it. Now you have to be careful because you have this plastic um, part in, in your buffer spring and if you don't hold on to it, when you pull it out of the, uh, the hole where the nipple goes in, you're gonna shoot this across the room. So I'll show you one more time. I'll try to get it closer here and let me see it back in. All right, let's see if I can show you. Let me look in the camera here. All right, so there's the hole, there's the nipple, and it seats in just like that. You heard it click. So what I do is I hold, I hold the, the whole thing like this, so if it does shoot, it's gonna hit into my hand. And you kind of use these two fingers to pull it out of your slot. Now it's not wanting to play. There we go. Yeah, I know you didn't get a good shot of that, but it, it is compressed in there. So you take your buffer spring and your uh, little buffer out, and then you just pull your, you just push it a little forward and pull it straight out. And there's your barrel. And there's your slide. And that's the whole disassembly of of the weapon. So. Again, actually, we're going to start with this. Put a little oil on your, uh, on your brush. And then, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he needed it. Run it through there a couple times. Looking good. Now, for the spring, I know this is a little monotonous and tedious, but I like to do it anyways because I just like to be thorough. But uh, I like to stick the... Uh, a paper towel or something in here and you just run it through run the spring if you rotate the spring it's going to rotate all the way through see how it's going all the way through it like that and you're just kind of getting the uh the carbon deposits off of the spring there shouldn't be much on there because I, i've already cleaned this uh, a couple months ago but let's take a look i mean you can see a little bit on there that's not too bad at all so he's good this is just a piece of plastic and just wipe him off really easy he's done and then this is where the most of your um, carbon deposits is going to be, is right here in the slide. So I, I typically use the brush for this whole thing. I just go into the, uh, into the barrel and into the buffer spring area. And then this area right here, this is where all the, uh, all the gunk likes to build up. So I just give it a quick little hit with the brush. And then I come through with the, uh, the towel or, or paper towel and uh, just kind of generally rub it all down get into every nook and cranny you can use um q-tips for that i mean look at that look at how much i'm pulling out of this after it's already been clean but uh, a real deep cleaning i'll, I'll use a, a q-tip i get in here into all these little crevices with a with a q-tip just to uh 
ensure that I'm really getting it really getting it clean and I do this I do a deep clean about once every year and then I do a um, just a general wipe down at least twice a year I try to do it in the spring and in the fall that way um, I stay on top of it all right so typically this guy doesn't get that dirty uh, there's not much going on but you can of course you know run your brush through here a little bit let's see So I got this all reassembled. Now I'm going to uh, put our weapon back together. So we're going to start. Put your barrel back in. It seeps in. And it, when it can't move, that's how you know you got it in there right. Then you take your buffer spring and you slide it into this hole and then put your nipple into that hole. So it goes in like such and you'll feel it. You'll feel it. There it goes. And then it won't move anymore. So now your slide and your barrel are put back together. Another pro tip here is cock this because your slide is going to come back and it'll just give you less resistance. So it is a butterfly. You can see the grooves on each side there and they line up with these grooves right here and right here. So you just stick this guy on like such. There he goes. He slides right on nice and easy. And there we go. So now it's on here, but it's not connected yet because we still have this guy to put on. So what I like to do is I, once you get him seated on here just like this, Put your uh, pin in, and then you still got to push it through. It's it's in, but it's not all the way in. You got to push it through that that little groove there. So you bring it back. There we go. Then uh, decock it, and then give it a function check. Everything seems to be working fine. My new mag, and it is done. So I got these guys nice and clean. They are good to go. And last thing I have is my uh, rifle, and he's uh, pretty easy, actually. One of my rifles, I should say. The one I'm going to be using here shortly. We got moose season right around the corner. This is my uh, 308 Model 1500 from Hoa. It's a Japanese-made rifle, uh, but it, this is probably one of my favorite rifles right here. I just absolutely love the... Uh, the, the entire design of it. I wanted a bolt action and that's exactly what I got and it's in the uh, Cryptek camo uh, pattern and I'll go there'll be a whole video series on um, on camouflage patterns and what I choose for this terrain out here in the Arctic uh, and why and then just some general thoughts of course of of, um, of camouflage patterns and, and whatnot and I can tell you uh, I did 10 years of military service and I can tell you uh, without a doubt, the effectiveness of certain <laughs> camouflage patterns. I did uh, two tours in Afghanistan as well, and it was kind of embarrassing on the first tour with our uh, ACU ACU pattern. But uh, right here is my boar snake. Uh, it's very straightforward. All you do, or what I like to do, I should say, is uh, I'm gonna use this oil. Put a little oil on your boar snake. Right here at the tip is fun. Just gets it nice and lubed. <clears throat> and then you feed the, the weighted end through. Uh, technically you're supposed to go the uh, direction of travel of the bullet, so we'll do that. Push it in there. And let's feed it through. And another tip that people don't really care about, it's easier to go the other way, but uh, you, you want to keep it going with the, the flow of traffic. Here we go, easy enough. Uh, typically, I'll run the boar snake through it a couple times, like three or four times, but this guy's pretty good. I don't, I don't see the need for that. Okay, let's get him locked and loaded. There we go. 
Uh, this guy is a bolt action, and as I was explaining, uh, in case you pick up this, is a 308, like I said. Uh, the way that you would go about loading it is from the chamber right here, the magazine. You can drop the this guy out, and it's just a spring. You probably didn't see it. There you go. So there's your spring for it. So you load your rounds right in here. So you press them down in one at a time, kind of like a M1 Grand. There's your 308, and he's nice and good to go. Uh, typically, I will wipe down his barrel as well, but the rest of it's polymer, so there's no need for that. Oh man, this guy has a brush on it. I didn't even notice. Perfect. So you get the the brush as well as the bore snake. <laughs> I bought all this stuff, uh, all the cleaners and whatnot. Just get it at your local retailer. I think I got these at Walmart, but. Uh, the weapons were purchased at the PX when I was in the army. Except that rifle. I don't know where the rifle was, was bought. My wife bought it for me. But other than that, that's going to be the uh, beginning of our series. Uh, the best advice out of this video is ensure that your weapons are properly maintained. Because when push comes to shove, you want them to perform it, that can literally spell the difference between life and death. So, uh, I look forward to your comments. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the video, and I will uh, do my best to answer them. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Bye.